Welcome, Ultimate fans, to Ulti World's live streaming coverage of the 2022 USA Ultimate National Championships, coming to you from just outside of San Diego, California. Keith Rayner joined by Katie Killebrew for a semi-final matchup. It's our final broadcast of, uh, of Nationals, but for one of these two teams, it's their final game. The other will move on to contend for a title. Denver Molly Brown taking on Toronto Sixers. Katie, a highly anticipated matchup. Two teams that have gotten to the semifinals before, uh, and reaching beyond that can be a real challenge. What do these teams have to do to be successful today? I think we have to deal with the conditions today. Uh, talking to coaches beforehand, they were talking really about the wind and the fact that it's a lot less sunny today. It's a, a little bit overcast here. And uh, I think for both of these teams, they're going to have to manage their emotions. It's semifinals. It's a big pressure situation. And I think that these teams uh, haven't necessarily been able to get past this point before. But if we're talking about the Sixers, they're the exception. They they did reach the final once, but it's still a somewhat inexperienced team. They've had a strong Nationals, however, upset flip side in pool play, and then uh, made their way through quarterfinals as well. Beat uh, Schwa on their way here. This, this has been a strong performance by Toronto. If we're looking at, at, at Sixers, we they have not been here since 2019 because of COVID, not being able to leave Canada. So they have 10 players who have actually never been to USAU national championships before, even though they've been uh, prolific in the tournament. Right, right. And other than that final appearance, they have not, never played another semifinal. So they played in one national semifinal uh, in their program history, a fairly brief history uh, and you'll notice that uh, their their two eliminations have come at the hands of brute squad uh, that's a fate that they share in common with denver molly brown however molly brown is looking to write a new story and they have been uh, authoring the first couple chapters with a very impressive performance here at the national championships absolutely the these two teams have done such a good job uh, of staying emotionally even, staying engaged in games, really making connections with their teammates. And you can see in these highlights, Molly Brown really uh, plays joyfully. They play with a lot of fun. And this is a team, it, it was interesting when we started out watching them because Molly Brown was like dancing, warming up, and Sixers was a little bit more uh, focused and tense. All right, and, and again, you see a lot of loss to Brute Squad. That they share in common. Not this year. Molly Brown beating Brute Squad in, in uh, their pre quarter or in their quarterfinal or pool play, excuse me, and then uh, winning their quarterfinal against DC Scandal uh, with a comfortable margin. This is a team that has a fantastic offense. They are a powerful defense. This is, in a lot of ways, feels like the year. It feels like this is the best we have seen Molly Brown look at this point in the season, and it's the right time. Uh, these two teams fighting for a spot in the final is the three and seven seeds, respectively. Uh, they will take on either Fury or Brute Squad. So uh, I, I don't know if either of these teams are saying they want to see Brute Squad in the final, or I think they just want to be there most of all. I think, I think both of these teams are ready to play, and I think both of them are in this position really because they won their final game in pool play. They had big uh, one-point wins each, uh, Molly Brown breeding Brute Squad in pool play, uh, and Sixers taking down Flipside and put them in this situation. Sixers in white pulling to Molly Brown in the blues. And right away, we're getting a lot of touches between the Cardena sisters, Valeria and Manuela. They will be focal points of this Denver offense. And that disc evading the grasp of Lisa Picatley. So a break chance for Toronto, and they look to push the pace. High block attempt from Cardenas, perhaps interfering just enough with the catch attempt. And Rachel Cook not able to get that one in bounds. Valeria send one deep to Kristen Reed, and the division's leading goal scorer adds to her tally with the first hold of the game. Molly Brown up 1-0. That was a big change in, in momentum in that game. I actually really like the aggressive defensive call from Sixers there. In that first point, they came out in a 
four-person zone up front right on the first point. It's a little bit windy today, uh, and that defense I really like starting on defense as a coach because it kind of gives you a point to get your legs under you on the field you're playing, kind of see the other offense. And uh, they force a lot of turns, that one being a little bit too much for Lisa McKaithley. Uh Sixers with their fast break going the other direction, not able to get it in bounds as do, uh, they did a full pirouette there. But that throw in the wind from uh, Valeria to Kristen Reed was just perfect. Valeria Cardenas has been tremendous here in San Diego. Continuance of uh, a dominant year for her and uh, is perhaps taking the crown of, of the best thrower in the game right now. And could be putting together a player of the year campaign. Uh, this has been uh, the, the highest of highs for Valeria. You can see the throwing prowess on display on that assist. She is, of course, one of the leaders in that category. This tournament. Or Kimura, the central handler for Sixers, going to send one looking for Britta Santos, but Ni Win takes to the skies for the block, coming over with the help and forcing the turnover. Talking with Coach Andy Loveseth before this game, uh, he said one of their keys was going to be to stop Brittany Dos Santos. They're picking up the disc and then sprinting a full 70 to catch it. Almost there. It was a two-player uh, defensive possession on Kimura that finally got them that D. However, that break chance doesn't even last a whole throw. Already the disc on the ground, so short field hold opportunity for Toronto. Kimura has a wide open teammate, but in just too difficult a position to reach, so Toronto swings. This spacing might look different than you. Molly Brown does a poach scheme in the end zone, uh, and it's given many teams trouble, including right now Sixers. They're so close to the doorstep and finally squeaking it in. Kimura eventually ending up with the assist to Cindy Tronk for the hold, so both teams taking two possession holds to start this game. Maybe a little bit of nerves from the offenses, but uh, hasn't shown up on the scoreboard yet. Well, no, but it's only been two points, and I think that, that you'd have to be crazy not to, to be feeling nerves, feeling the emotions of this moment. That was such a good D there by Nguyen. Yeah, and, and when, uh, when, we talked to, when, when we were talking to our reporters about what's the most impressive plays they've seen thus far, Wins, wins hops were one of the things that were listed, and there you see them on display. These two teams both coming off strong regular seasons that put them in the conversation for being one seeds coming into the tournament. Uh, Denver Molly Brown ending up securing that uh, three seed, and Sixers a little bit down the line. And, you know, both of these teams have won tournaments. Toronto Sixers winning the Elite Select Challenge. Denver Molly Brown winning the Pro Championships. Uh, it has been successful seasons for both of these teams in preparation for this moment. Yeah, Sixers in particular has played a lot of games because not listed in that is the WUCC games that they went to uh, World Club Championships in the middle of the season. So they, they have had a, a long grind of a season, many, many more games than most other women's teams. Yep, and uh, just going off the top of my head, I think there are six players in this game who competed in the World Games as well. Three maybe per side. Back to zone for Toronto. The Sixers perhaps thinking that this win might help give them advantages, although they're now shifting into a matchup defense. Rachel Wilmoth comes underneath for Denver. Crowded reset space is gonna get a pick call out of the Sixers. I like that zone call that crumbles kind of before half field, really stopping Molly Brown's pull play and then making them grind all the way up the rest of the field in person. And great late stall find by Cardenas. I don't know how she spotted Ronnie Eater sneaking out of the back of the stack, but Valeria sends the back end of the end zone for the second assist and the team's second goal. 
Ronnie Eater just has such a good nose for the back of the end zone. Uh, a tall player who seems to find a lot of space uh, and is really good in, in that deep space as that stall count righted. I said they were going to have to grind, but they didn't. They just needed a one throw score. See, Cardenas just running out of time. But looks as easy and, and, and cool and calm as collected as, uh, as you would expect from a player of her caliber, even if her age may belie that. It's such a convincing flick fake. It fakes me out every single time she throws it. Well, when you or got, doesn't throw it. When, when, you, when you're one of the most dangerous throwers in the world, everyone's going to fear pretty much every move you make. Uh, and there, I mentioned World Games players. That's a, that's a pair of World Games players, neither of whom... Uh, are playing with the, their home country here. Valeria playing with uh, Colombia in the World Games, and Molly Wedge, who is, uh, a, I believe, a dual citizen of Canada and the UK, playing with the British side during the World Games as well. Both Kimura and Britta Santos also on that World Games lineup although they were doing it for Team Canada, and they're in the backfield to begin this possession. Nicely worked. And now DeSantos has a wide open target, but may run out of room at the back of the end zone. But alas, it is contained. They're using every inch of that field. One of the things I, I love about watching the Sixers play is how much space they create. They may run a dominator play, but other players, when they run it, run really close to each other. Uh, they spread out so wide uh, in that space, and, and there's no way that Molly Brown can cover everything. You can see them here using the full width of the field, moving up, and then this one just floating kind of to what would be the break side, really well tracked down there for the Sixers hold and score. The Reef Chan securing the goal. Britt DeSantos on the assist. And we're already starting to see the, the versatility uh, that Britta Santos can apply. And we're starting to see uh, how Toronto is, is adjusting to the wind. Uh, they've been throwing zone on defense and then uh, attacking with those throws of space on offense. And that's one of our keys to the game here. Absolutely, and I think the other one they talk about, you know, Dos Santos, but also converting breaks. Molly Brown has gotten some Ds and then immediately thrown it away again. And I think that that's something that they're going to have to really work on in this game if they're going to want to get a break. Like, you're not going to win this game without breaking if you start on defense. <laughs> and, you, and you notice that that's uh, contained Dos Santos, not stop Dos Santos, because one of those is, uh, is ambitious and the other is uh, wish fulfillment. So back to zone for Toronto. A, a bit surprising to see them throw it three times in a row, but they must really like what they're getting out of it. And you also can reshape your zone a little bit point between point to keep the other team from getting too comfortable. You'll see different handlers out here because uh, Molly Brown runs a three squad line. Jump ball for Win, and that's exactly what she wants. Takes the contact and then goes and gets the disc for the score, however, uh, her defender looking uncomfortable after the play. Hopefully everyone's safe after that. I don't know I don't know if the call, uh, if there was a call, uh, we can get another look at this big throw going up here. Yeah, Megan, Megan Gillis falling to the ground after trying to fight for position. No call on the play, but Gillis looking a little worse for wear. Looked like it could have been uh, an injury from that ground contact. Sometimes the ground is not kind to you, Keith. Sometimes the ground is, is your worst enemy. Just a wrong step or, or momentum that doesn't go your way. Another angle, just maybe getting a little bit tangled up there with her own feet. That's, that's not my favorite. Not, not, a, not a fun place to be, but uh, you know, I, I, probably not a fun place to be in the, in the deep space with Nee Win on, on patrol. She, very shrewd move though, to keeps, keeps grounded on that one, uh, just with a strong read. It doesn't even have to go up for a big catch. All holds to start this one, 3-2, Denver leads. And like you mentioned, Denver uh, has kind of gone to a, uh, a style I feel like is popularized really by Fury in the, in the elite women's game uh, of just rotating lines. Not offense and defense, uh, just 
sending out groups together with a high level of chemistry that all know how to do everything. Matchup defense for Molly Brown. Strong, trapped on the sideline. And now it just sends one out to space and has a streaking cutter. Turning on the Jets is Inka Westman, the finish import. And uh, look at, looking like a fine-tuned European vehicle on that speedy catch. That was an absolutely athletic, amazing play uh, to the break side. It's a trust throw from Toronto. Clearly they've run it many times. Those cutters were really aware that that was happening and the Molly Brown defenders maybe looked a little bit like they had been caught poaching or maybe not close enough on uh, that break side space. But this is just putting on the Jets. The wind is taking it away from the player and she manages to catch up all the way out to the side. I'm impressed by that. That's exciting. And Westman, Westman got some pretty imposing figure with uh, her size and power, but to show off that type of speed too, uh, that, that is a, a scary prospect if you're gonna be a, a matchup defender having to go up against Inca Westman. I, I love the matchups that are developing in this game. Both of these teams have really uh, compelling athletes, compelling storylines. They're really athletic. They do a good job of using space and they're unafraid to put the disc deep. So. I, I like watching as they're kind of learning each other to see how, how this game starts to develop. Sixers playing without the services of Sarah Jacobson, who would be probably be a pretty key figure in their deep game as one of their most athletic players. Broke her finger yesterday, so is uh, stuck on the sidelines. And well, Cardenas sending one to Lisa Picadley at the back corner, but that one, Ambition is uh, beyond the execution. I was going to say, it, it'll be interesting given these matchups, which team blinked first. And that one was just not catchable out of the back. Reset now for Sixers. Looking for that first break of the game. Cook to Molly Lewis, taking that to the knees. Lewis, a tough customer though, gets up. Big deep fake from Wedge. Now around to Alyssa Mason. That's three consecutive World Games participants, I believe, for Sixers. So has, has exceeded my initial projected count of six. Cross field from Wedge, open target, Crystal to Santos, and Sixer strikes first. The Sixers score the seventh goal to go up 4-3. The break offense from Sixers has been astonishing all weekend. Usually I'm, I'm talking about their fast break. They will get a D and, it, and rush down the field. But this possession in the wind was so patient. They're, they're covered very tightly by defenders. This is where the turn happened. Uh, Mar Manuela putting it out. You can see it goes out the back there, Piquetley at the back cone. This is the score, which is another big cross field score. But before that, working it up the field the entire way getting it to one sideline, and then really attacking the other side, using the full width of the field. The space that Sixers uses is, I think, it, I want to say textbook, but I don't see anybody else using this same book in the same way. You can see the conditions here in San Diego are coolest day thus far. And a little bit of a breeze here. That, that's seven miles per hour, perhaps a little misleading. I feel like it, it comes and goes a little bit stronger than that for the time being. It's the last round of play here at the Surf Cup Sports Park. Semifinal here and a semifinal in the men's division taking place on the field next door. You can catch that matchup between Johnny Bravo, fellow Denver team like Molly Brown, and Portland Rhino.
So these two teams still fighting for that spot in the final, just like the teams next door. You can catch the men's division semifinal through an Ulti World subscription. There's, is there something poetic to a, a team named after a Molly, giving up a break to a pair of Mollies? Molly Wedge, Molly Lewis engineering that score for the Sixers? It, it's certainly the same name. <laughs> po poetic is maybe a strong way to phrase are you saying that. that. Are you saying that just writing the word Molly a bunch of times wouldn't constitute a poem? No. Yes, that, <laughs> I, I guess I can't be the authority on what is art. Speaking of mollies, there's Lewis breaking up the play, although there's a foul call on the throw, and I believe it's uncontested. It's like Alika Johnston there with, with the disc. Johnston, one of the three Callahan winners, I believe, on the Molly Brown team. I don't think that. Can I, can I ask the question, though? No. So, I definitely fouled her on the release of the throw. I do not contest that at all. Um, but because the throw went straight and like Molly got in the, or sorry, number 35 got in the I mean, there's so, so the, there's so many the outcome of the throw does not, okay. does not matter in the, cool. okay, you know, foul, uncontest. Okay. Oh, rules clarification there. In name clarification, Mo Molly went trying to make sure that there was not confusion about whether she was talking about Molly Lewis or Molly Brown on that moment. <laughs> I think it's funny. I like eight. that you like it. <laughs> Sends one looking for Johnson against Wedge, but it's Wynn again sweeping in for the backside catch, although I think there was a foul called by Johnson again. So play will resume with Wynn. Back to Cardenas. Manu. Short throw to Sarah Taggart, and a player went down on the play, and it looks like there will be a call. Chastain really open on that one after uh, the defender went down to the ground. So Rachel Cook going to discuss. Pick called. Pick called. Okay. Pick called. You're coming back. So I said, I said two. Saying three. Saying three. Back underway, and the reset to Chastain is too wide and low. And Sixers looking to pick up with pace like we knew they would. They are relentless. Wedge and Lewis exchanging possession as they wait for a cutter to try and get free. Alyssa Mason responds to the call. But her round break goes over the head of Lewis, intercepted by Taggart. Short field now for Denver. Chastain. Out to space, trying to hit Manu on the away cut to the back cone. That is a high degree of difficulty throw. Mason there to help make sure it is completed. This game was very clean before the last point, right? The last point, point or so. And then it felt like after that Molly Brown turnover, it's, it's felt a lot more nervy from Molly Brown, making more mistakes than I think they want to. Molly Brown, not going to be a team that shies away from taking difficult options, uh, but that one is a, is a tough ask. Nico Birch up line, now sending a deep throw for Lima Pasra. That one is completed, and just past the brick mark, Sixers with a chance to add another break. Basra into the end zone, and the Sixers are celebrating as they go up another break. Sarah Marr getting the score to make the Sixers double up. Molly Brown. What a momentum shift that was, Keith. Molly Brown had it on their own end zone line twice. Twice they had it on their end zone line. 
just throwing it away. I mean, maybe maybe they're a little bit spoiled having Manuela Cardenas as a receiver for them in that space. Sometimes coming down with them. This one just not easy for Claire Chastain. This snag out of the air gave them possession back and just away in the back of the end zone. Can't quite get that one. And it was this possession here using that space, finding receivers. Look at the joy on Sixers' faces. I like that. They're hype. They were not a hype team this morning, and as they ramp up in this game, we're seeing more and more emotion come out of Sixers. Yeah, this is a team right now that's happy to be here, but not just happy to be here. There, there is a distinction. Uh, but I'm sure most of all, they're probably happy to be up 5-3 in the semifinal, seizing the early lead, being able to put the pressure on Molly Brown rather than have to battle the pressure from Denver. I mean, th this is certainly not a game that's that's over, but I, I like seeing the momentum shifts that are happening in this game. Mason with the pull, fielded by Vale ahead of all of the cutters, and that still doesn't stop her from getting off four passes or so within just a couple of seconds. Vale looking up, field to her sister, and a foul call may preserve possession here. Mar on the mark. Cardenas reset. Molly Brown into a vertical stack. Reed catching it past a flying Mason. But her backhand up the line is out of the reach. So another turnover and things coming undone a bit for Molly Brown's offense. High stall count now for Toronto and try to squeeze a reset into a small window. They'll give it up on the doorstep. Pick call will stop play before Molly Brown can advance into the end zone. And to the back line for a bidding receiver. Looks no like shortage of effort for, for McCaithley, but can't come up with a catch. They've tried to make her make some tough catches in this one. She had the early drop, but then since then has had uh, some turnovers that probably are not her fault. No, uh, I certainly would not put that one on Picatley there. That was a really tough option. Quick transition to a, a poaching look from Molly Brown. It's there's not a, yield much success. Yeah, there's a player down in the back of the field, observers signaling to stop play, but the upfield players certainly don't seem to notice. Yeah, I, I don't think this turnover will stand. This injury call coming uh, quite a bit ago. Yes. And Alyssa Mason also will take an injury call as well. Yeah, big, big layout left upfield. It's uh, Sayola Lostra, who went down for Molly Brown earlier in the possession, being tended to by her teammates. So this will be a messy one to untangle. An injury call stops play immediately. So at the point uh, of the injury, which might be before the throw, uh, if they're looking at that replay, but they uh, might not have the, the benefit of, of when that was, so the observers will work it out. But of course, we want to make sure that players are there still uh, attending. Okay, so Sixers possession still, because the injury was several throws ago before the turn. So not sure exactly how players will line up, given that Loescher's injury came quite a bit ago. She's being helped off the field by her teammates now. Uh, players are just going to have to uh, approximate where they might have been. Yeah, remember, we'll, uh, we'll remember where you up. were way back then? <laughs> Do your best. I always, I always compare it to, uh, like, in a courtroom when they say strike it, strike it from the record. Like, everybody heard you say it, though. It's, it's, it's really difficult for players to, like, figure out exactly where they should be, so we're just going to fudge it a little bit.
So still ironing out the details now. I mean, there's there's a lot of details to, to iron out. I, I think one of my favorite things, though, is, is just watching a bunch of people pointing in different directions. Uh, it, it, in my head, it, it just looks like one of those things where where no one knows what's going on. It's a, a difficult thing to, to communicate. It doesn't happen that often where a, an injury call is not recognized for the entire length of the field. Um, But, uh, but we'll figure it out. I think for me, though, I, it's going to be important for Molly to maybe take this moment to mentally reset. They're playing defense. This was an offensive possession for them. It, it can be a big swing in this game if, if they can't get this turn back. Lauren Kimura, who checked in for Mason, taking a touch right away. Britt DeSantos. Also on the field, I think she may have subbed in as a matchup sub with Denver subbing out Lostra. So, a lot of personnel changes. Diving save for Britt. She has been all over the field right now. Upfield towards the red zone. Can Toronto Sixers make it three breaks in a row? Offense slowing down as they look for a high stall option and find one. Mar over the stack. Defender coming on strong and Kristen Reed swats it away. Yeah, that poach scheme working to Molly Brown's favor there. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it. I, I got a chance to see that this red zone poach scheme that they were running earlier in the year as they were just kind of instituting it, and it looked shaky. <laughs> it was often giving free goals to teams, but they stuck with it and tried to iron out the kinks. And right now, it's it's working pretty well for them. Valeria's throw goes over the head of Manu. Quick strike from DeSantos into the end zone, but Valeria gets a touch to it. It stays in bounds. Valeria frustrated. The Sixers over joyous as they strike another break into the end zone for the score. Oh, that was such a good defensive play by Valeria and the wind just caught the underside of that disc and gave it another life. And uh, it, it was the, the entire group of people watching this game and participating in it, uh, just pausing as that disc bounced off the hand of Valeria Caught just a gust of wind, and you had that feeling, oh man, this really might stay in bounds. Hannah Dawson staying with it and tracking it down. And that's a, that's a tough conclusion to that point for Valeria. Throws the turnover. Thinks she has the block to save the goal, and instead, Sixers gets another score. Uh, I I think that this is such good defense by Sixers to stop Molly Brown's momentum. Such good defense. Timeout now from Denver. Gives us a chance to thank Breakmark Ultimate. Breakmark is on a mission to give away free reversibles this year. They're about to hit 1,000 and are targeting 2,500 next. Help them achieve that goal and earn chances for fabulous prizes with each goal met. Find out how you can get yours at breakmark.com. We couldn't bring this presentation to you without the help of our subscribers. Ask Ultimate players what they love about the game, and most will say the community. Connect with Ultimate fans around the globe as an UltiWorld subscriber. With an UltiWorld subscription, chat in our Discord, get all the content, and catch the games people are talking about. Join the conversation at ultiworld.com slash subscribe. I like the Discord a lot. <laughs> I'm kind of a Discord lurker. I don't participate, but I really uh, like the discussions that, that happen in the, in the Ulti World Discord. Like whether it's whether it's fans from different parts of the world talking about players or insiders. Like every once in a while, a player will come in and make a comment about something you said about them, or you'll have two players exchange conversation too. Like of the best players in the world, the people you're watching on stream. It's a it's a really interesting environment, and 
brings together some of the things I think people love about Ultimate. It's still small enough where the star players are accessible. They know people you know, or you know, some of these people coach college and youth, people who've never heard of high-level Ultimate to have access to some of the world's best players. I mean, it's a, it's a remarkable thing. Pole lands in bounds. Valerius staying out there for another rotation with Molly Brown. And I wonder if being in this high pressure situation, trailing by three in the semifinal, will stress some of how they rotate players. McKaithley in traffic underneath. Sixers doing a nice job limiting Piquetley's impact through the first portion of this game. Reset back to Valeria. Kendra Mitchell, one of the rookies on this team. Manu Tavale has a streak in Piquetley and looks it off. Perhaps a, a shift in priority for Molly Brown. As they continue to attack these unders. Pick call. Piquetley sends one to the end zone anyway. Maybe just wants to see one go through the hoop. I actually think there may be an injury call prior to the throw. Yeah, certainly prior to, to Piquetley's throw. I think the disc may stay with uh, Piquetley. That's, you can see the signal there from Win G. Steps off and is replaced by Hannah Dawson. Yeah, that, that uh, hands over the head, I think, is the WFDF hand signal for injury, which is slightly different from the USAU hand signal for injury. Why they implemented hand signals that are different from the other rule sets, I do not know. Uh, but that's, I think, a little bit of the confusion there. And like you said, the, the Sixers played in, in the World Ultimate Club Championship, so they've, they've done the whiff-diff signals too this year. Back underway, advancing towards the end zone now in the hands of Johnston. Nice job on the mark to cut off an open option, but a pick call stops play again. Keithley holding the disc, only briefly. Beautiful throw to space from Manu. Sets up, they continue into the end zone for Mitchell from Johnston. So Molly Brown finally stops the run. Whew, what an emotional release after that, that final hold from Molly. Just like the whole sideline took took a, took a sigh of relief. I like that for them. I I want want this team to do well. You've, we've seen uh, a lot of things happening. We were talking to Sixers coach Carla DeFilippo uh, before this game, and she said that the the Sixers loss to Molly Brown was a turning point for them in their season, and they made a lot of adjustments since that game. One of the things they had to adjust for was certainly Valeria Cardenas. Yeah, it's, it's a hard thing to adjust for. I mean, it is a full force. And Cardenas has not had a perfect game. You see there's been some mistakes, but certainly has been a co consistent presence. And I, I think there is not going to be, the trust there is unshakable. I, I don't think Molly Brown's going to have any doubt about putting the disc in Molly's hands. See the, the good and the bad in the early going. Pull just about to the brick mark for Molly Brown. Haven't gotten a chance to see this Toronto offense for a little while, so they're going to come out well rested. Not what you want to hear for you're going up against Britta Santos, who curls up the line past Eater, sends one to the end zone. This one hanging up, pack of players underneath, and it bounces off hands. It comes down. In the possession of the Sixers, a foul call may keep this from being a goal for Tiffany Zhang in Toronto. 
That was a whole pack of players coming together as this one floats up over the top of the stack, giving time for players to pack in underneath. Everyone going in and just having the focus there to grab it. We'll see what's going to be the result of this one. Always tricky to uh, police the pack, as it were. A lot of bodies, a lot of contact, a common feature of these pileups. Yeah, I, I, as far as pileups go, though, people seemed to, to get into a place and then jump pretty much straight up into the vertical space. I didn't see many hands uh, hit, and especially on that second effort, it, it was all, uh, I think, number 92 there with the focus to make that grab. Tippy Zhang on the catch. We'll see again. Wind definitely taking that disc. Yeah, I, I don't know if Wilmoth has a case on the first attempt, but I'm not actually sure if that's what she's arguing because she did also get a second shot at the block. So adding some extra confusion, uh, whatever cleanliness there might have been on the initial play, there. Is a second and third catch attempt, but the end result are observer hands straight up in the air for a Sixers goal. Tiffany Zhang, one of six teenagers in the women's division at the club championships, comes down with the goal. The youngest player on the Sixers roster gets a vital score. Yeah. Brittany Dos Santos does such a good job of catching, turning, and immediately throwing. There's no hesitation in that. That one puts a little bit uh, of air underneath it and then just floats it out. Britt Dos Santos has been having a fantastic year, nearly of the same caliber as Valeria Manu Cardenas. Was tremendous at the World Games, has continued that at the World Ultimate Club Championships and into this USA Ultimate Club season. An explosive athlete who's also extremely skilled. And that, that second part of her game is just rounding more and more into form. She seems like she's a stronger player every time I see her. In the wind, I'd like a little less float on that particular disc, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit flatter so it doesn't get pulled and you don't have to have that long conversation about whether you scored or not. Uh, but I can't really take issue with anything else there, really making a huge impact there. Three for assists in a block for the younger of the two DeSantos is on the roster. That just just got her first uh, adult job, as was explained to me by Coach Carla Filippo. They actually work at the same school, though, in different departments. So, you know, we've seen Britta Santos. Uh, she's maturing off the field, but she's maturing on the field, too. I, I'm really turning into a player who this team can rely on rather than kind of just the young, explosive star. I, I think you've seen Sixers just kind of giving her the keys this year. Valeria has Manu taking off. Manu puts a hand up, and that psychic connection almost fired right there. Instead, Valeria wisely puts it over to Pickathley. Mitchell looking to reset, pressured by Crystal DeSantos. Manu working against Mason. This is a tough matchup. The kind of matchup Alyssa Mason revels in, but equally so, Manu Cardenas, a, a fierce competitor. Yeah, there's picks up field because, because they're having to run weird routes because of the tight uh, pressure that the Sixers defense is running on them. Yeah, the Sixers not generating a ton of blocks, but a lot of these Molly Brown errors are coming because of Sixers pressure. Excellent fake from Nisip and Kaithley. Sends a pair of poaching defenders the wrong direction. And she puts it in the hands of Kristen Reed for another Reed goal. Yeah, Pekathley doing a good job there to take advantage of the, the missed switch there by the uh, Sixers defenders. Leaving Reed open in the back of the end zone is, is maybe not the move you want to go with, but I, uh, I think Molly is glad to have made that connection. 
For those for those fans who happen to hang out with us when we uh, were on Field Fast together, we talked about our uh, frequent flyer program in the end zone. Krista Reed has uh, certainly been stacking them up lately. She actually led the mixed division in goals scored two seasons ago at the Cup Championship. So she's no stranger to topping the leaderboard. And it's been putting up numbers here at San Diego this weekend as well. Coming into the day with 16 goals, that made her second in the women's division behind Dina Elamelik from Flipside. And has already tallied a couple in this one as well. So Reed adding a pair to that total. Certainly will help her case to advance another round. And there's work to do for Molly Brown if they want to achieve that goal. Trailing seven to five, six is a chance to take half and put this one into the intermission period. Santos fielding the pull up to Kimura. Isolation for Sydney Tron to start. Zhang, the youngster, high releases to Westman. Dancing up that far sideline now. Now moving across the field, Trong and Zhang. Zach trying to put one to the back corner, but can't get it around. Samantha Pelletier comes down with the block. Almost a double block there from Molly Brown. Yeah, not good for our, for our statisticians, but good for the Denver fans. And a transition right into zone with Molly Brown trapped on the coffin corner. This should back to Claire Chastain, who's had a quiet game, uh, playing more defense, I think, for Molly Brown at this tournament than usual, and that, that just is gonna always reduce your touches. Oh, I love this. A, an O-line that's called to run a zone on a turn, making this D-line, who probably doesn't face as many zones, really struggle with it. I mean, maybe Claire Justine giving them an advantage against this. But only working at sideline to sideline, only now getting out of their own end zone. Sarah Taggart with the disc on the far sideline as Sixers transitions to match up one-on-one. -on -one. Wynn squeezes one out against DeSantos, but she gets a cleat onto the plastic for that block. Kamara cleans it up. Open target to start the next possession. Sarah Innes around to DeSantos. BDS to the middle. I don't know what Molly did on the turn there, but they seem to have missed several matchups. That has been a cascade as Molly Brown scrambles to get back into position on these streaking Sixers players, and they can't do it in time. Toronto taking half in the semifinals. They're up eight to five. That was such a smart tactical call by the Sixers, knowing uh, that Molly needed a break here. So they, they called their offensive line and they're like, well, if we turn it, we're gonna run zone for the first however many throws or possessions. Uh, really throwing Molly Brown off their rhythm. They like to attack quickly down the field and Sixers is making them hold the disc for a long time. Uh, I'm impressed. I'm, imp I'm impressed with how Sixers has played so so far in this half. What about you, Keith? I'm impressed, and the Sixers have to be impressed. They're up 8-5 to five with the advantage over Molly Brown.
last 50 years have seen a lot of positive change. Around a whole range of important issues. And some things remain reassuringly unchanged. Like the spirit of our game. Ultimate is 50 years young and still a perfect circle. Of oh, fair play. Athletic pursuit. And camaraderie. In fact, Ultimate was a social network. Before social networks even existed. Respetamos nuestras diferencias. And understand the value that they add. The revolution of the disc in flight continues to prove that there's nothing we can't achieve when we pull together. Long live Ultimate. Larga vida Ultimate. Long live Ultimate. Sixers with the 8-5 advantage as we are into the break. Midpoint in this game and Katie Here's the tail of the tape. What stands out across the stats of the first half? I think that that goose egg of breaks from break chances for Molly Brown. They had to, especially early in the game, weren't able to do it, and then they have just turned it over too many times. Each holding the same amount of times, but it's really, it's, a, it's the difference of, of converting those break chances that I've seen from Sixers. They're, Break offense has really been one of the stories of this uh, day for me. All right, so uh, certainly a second half to watch coming up. Molly Brown with the comeback bid. Sixers looking to hold on to advance to their second appearance in the finals. There is a place where we are us at our best. A place where everyone is welcome. Regardless of age, shape, skin color, or anything else that tries to box people in. A place where we defy the odds, defy the naysayers, and even defy gravity. A place where it's accepted that success doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave, to the determined. A place that knows grit, knows grace, knows bright lights, and knows empty bleachers. A place where we remember to laugh. Where we learn to trust. Learn to high-five strangers. And eventually, even learn to fly. A place where character, community, and competition are all as balanced as a disc in flight. That place isn't in a stadium or on a field. That place is in the spirit of our players. Because we don't just play ultimate, we live ultimate. Welcome back for the second half of this women's division semifinal. Number three overall seed, Denver Molly Brown trails the seven overall seed, Toronto Sixers, eight to five. So work to do for Denver. I'm Keith Rainer, joined by Katie Killebrew. Katie, three goal hole coming into the second half. If you're in that huddle, what are you talking to your team about? If I'm in a three, Three goal hole, right? Eight, eight, five. Most dangerous score in ultimate, right? Denver Molly Brown. They started uh, uh, on O. They held the first point, so they're coming out on D. They're a team that can certainly make this switch, but they have to talk about team love, belief in system, moving the disc, whatever. A small, minute changes those coaches are talking about. They clearly believe it, right? They they are a team that thrives on joy, and we haven't seen that as much in the last couple of points. And I think this halftime is going to be a really important uh, emotional moment for them in order to to keep going. I literally think they just yelled team love. Well, you, you know, uh, being a team that thrives on joy, real easy when you're kicking everybody's butts. Gets a lot harder when uh, when it's your butt that's taking a foot. So it it's. It's, this is the real test of that type of team unity that I think is so easy to maintain. It's easy to be the team of, of, of joyousness, of smiles, of celebration when everything's going your way. How do you handle when there is a, a, a real challenge in front of you, an obstacle that's testing that part of your team? 
Now, this is a, a Molly Brown team that's been here before. Uh, and if they crumble, you got to think about them seeing Ghost a bit. Uh, how many times have they been in the position in semifinals to get through, to feel like, hey, we've had a great team, we've had a great season, and just come up short when it mattered the most? Uh, how, can they contain that? That is the emotional battle. It's probably as much a battle against themselves as it is against this uh, incredibly tough Toronto team. How do you find joy, joy in the struggle? Challenge, the challenge every team is facing, really every athlete. They'll have to start on defense to do that. Kimura looking for another deep shot. This one to Trong, and I'm, I'm not sure why Toronto keeps going after Nee Win. Seems like the wrong target. She knocks it away. Unfortunately, Trong goes down as well. That's a really difficult forehand throw in this wind. I think it's it's really flirting with the sideline there in and out of bounds where where it happened and and all that sort of play. Uh, Nguyen having to go up big and make sure that that catch wasn't towed in, in bounds. I, I, I think the wind uh, a, is mostly a crosswind, perhaps a, a little bit towards the right side end zone of your screen. So this throw had a, had a little bit of wind behind it, but mostly also pushing it towards the sideline. So it's a really difficult throw to execute. And you can see Kamara trying to shape that back onto the field with that outside in edge. I love seeing fans uh, on the sideline. A lot of families, friends coming out to support uh, semifinals. is certainly a time when you need those extra voices, that extra energy. like a foul contest is going to send the disc uh, back to, I think Kimura had it, way back over here on this side. Our observer making a great catch there, which is what the players are smiling about. I love that the players is, celebrating it. Yeah, that is Byrne, one of one of the most experienced uh, observers, uh, and, and helping officiate Ultimate in, I think, uh, every division. Not just at USAU, but every league. And that... Set, a set of events does not work in Toronto's favor. It quickly becomes a Molly Brown break to start the second half. Kamura's throw sailing over the head of its target, Johnston immediately into the end zone for a Taggart score. And that is exactly the energy that Molly Brown wanted coming out. They like thriving on defense. That one coming back on a, on a foul contest call. And the wind giveth and the wind taketh away. At uh, that time, Johnston just putting it on a line out for Taggett. Kimura not able to make up, admittedly, a lot of ground out there and leading to a much needed break. Well, that that's a momentum shifter right there. <laughs> Come out of the break and immediately start with a break. And now Toronto a bit on the back foot. A response here from this offense is critical. Like I said, most dangerous score in ultimate because it can shift that quickly. Alika Johnston sending that break in and, and Johnston has had a strong first half and has continued that into the second half. A, a calm presence who's been really good at throwing in the wind and finding that uh, outside space. Uh, I think that when you have stars, you know, when you have the uh, Cardenas sisters, when you have you know, Kimura, you have those playbooks. It's really the other players on the field that are gonna end up being the difference makers. And when your difference makers are other Callahan winners, that's definitely playing uh, into your favor as a team. I, I, look, I love a good number 13, that's my number. Uh, but Alika Johnson is just one of those players who, every team that she plays on, her teammates sing her praises. I mean, she is just the kind of player that teammates want to have with them. They trust her, they know she'll have their back. Uh, and she's playing at a really high level as well. An incredibly consistent, tough player who doesn't shy away from hard plays. Sixers looking to respond after the pull went out of bounds. Mason up line to BDS. And we've seen a lot of touches for these key players for Sixers, and you can see why. I mean, they're putting the dominate in Dominator. Brenda Santos gets the score, and that is the response Toronto needed. Molly Brown had talked about wanting to contain uh, Dos Santos, uh, Ronnie Eater taking the matchup on that particular point, and just not able to contain that every other momentum uh, that 
as we would call it, a dominator series where you move the disc back and forth within the handlers and then attack upfield. The dominator series that, that Sixers is running is just chomping up yard after yard. They use so much space in this. And, and, and the engine behind it right now is Brenda Santos. I mean, her first step is just gobbling up defenders. And she's not making a lot of errors with the disc, has one turnover in this game, but uh, that's small potatoes compared to a goal and three assists. She is racking up game leading numbers right now and is helping give her team the lead. Yeah, the, the, whatever tactical changes they made since the first uh, meeting with Molly Brown have certainly started to uh, make their impact felt in this game. Valeria Cardenas fields that. And they bouncing disc movement of the Cardenas sisters. Advances the disc past the brick mark. Valeria up to Reed. Reed with the dish and two sixers collide. That'll stop play. Sometimes that happens when you have that quick, uh, smaller give and go movement, sometimes known as dribbling between players, which uh, Valeria is really good at. Also gobbling up yards, but requiring many more throws. Good to see you lost her back on the field. Took an injury in the first half, but has returned and is getting a lot of touches on this point. And that throw uh, takes a little bit of a dive towards the ground and Manu just not able to catch it. Fast break attempt from Molly Lewis. Trying to send Dawson into the deep space, but Manu intercepts. No delay the other way either. Molly Brown initiating quickly. Now Megan Cousins has it on that upwind sideline into the end zone for Pekathley. No one around. And Pekathley puts a boot to the plastic to send it up in the air with a signature kick spike. That could have been a very costly turn uh, throwing error there from Pekathley. Uh, but uh, while Manu couldn't make the catch, she certainly, certainly caught the D. You can see the, the error on the other end, but Manu gets it back. She and Pekatli involved in the turnover, but both involved in the plays that helped get a score for Molly Brown the other way. Yeah, even though there was a turnover, uh, Manu did such a good job of not, not, Worrying about that turn, immediately playing defense, and I think that that's necessary when Sixers is a team that's going to pick it up and huck it immediately. You can't waste your energy worrying about a turn. You have to go play defense immediately, and that worked in Molly Brown's favor in that point. Lisa McGaithley is a player I've been watching for a long time, pretty much my entire Ultimate coverage career. Was a star at UC Santa Barbara when I first came on with Ulti World, and uh, I got to say, has aged gracefully in the game in a way I might have not expected. She was such a tremendous athlete, uh, a player who dominated with her physical presence. And sure, she was skilled, but I thought that might challenge her as she got older and it, it, you know, just crossing the 30 line. So not like, we're not talking about an elderly player or anything, but certainly not the same athlete that she once was, but has sharpened her game in so many other ways, has remained an incredible offensive threat. Westman back to Trong. Chastain now taking the DeSantos matchup. So maybe a, a change in strategy from Molly Brown. And DeSantos has decided to just mostly drift away, let her teammates take care of it at this point. Yeah, Andy Loves has said that they wanted to try to force Toronto to run their vertical stack. They didn't look as comfortable in it. And I agree with him. They, this is not the same kind of flowing offense we've seen from Sixers a little forced in certain places. But the Sixers unrelenting nonetheless. Kimura underneath, then Zhang gets it over to Chan. Chan with a little shake and bake in the end zone for the score. Toronto staying strong. Even though it wasn't where they were most comfortable, they certainly still made it work. And to me, that, that's, that's the mark of a Brazilian offense. 
Uh, can you win when you aren't doing plan A? Uh, when, when things are not easy, you know, sometimes the flow is just there, you're hitting your marks, you're executing the plan for you, your plan A. And Molly Brown did a good job forcing them to plan B, but they're really great offenses. They can go plan B. Sometimes you go plan C. And uh, there, Toronto working the alphabet a little bit and, and into the end zone. Exactly. As a defense, you want to make the other team use all seven players on the field. You want them to do not their favorite thing. If they like hucking, you want to make them work it. If they like working it, you want to make it huck it. If they like the open side, you want to make them use the break side. And I think Molly Brown is making Sixers do things that they're maybe less comfortable with. But Sixers is proving that they can still score in those spaces and they're not going to give up easy turns. That they're going to really make Molly Brown, I think, get a full block. Uh, in order to get that turn. And Molly Brown so far hasn't proven that, that when they get those uh, break opportunities that they can convert on them. So as we get closer to this game, you know, we're playing we're playing to 15. We're inching closer. Molly Brown's gonna have to make a move. Denver Johnny Bravo fighting for a spot in the final on the field next door. Toronto Goat, the men's division team, also on the sidelines, but they're able to, to show some support for uh, for the Sixers, they were eliminated earlier in the competition. So back to the zone, just like we saw in the beginning of the first half for Sixers. Maybe looking to change the pace of the game a little bit. But it lasted just a few throws. Matchups now forming on the field. Lostra. One of the many Colorado Quandary associated players on this roster. Gets it back to Valeria. And you can see a wide spread right now for Molly Brown down the field. I, I, you said a wide spread. I was going to say it's a deep spread, <laughs> but not a wide spread. They're all on the same half or almost third of the field. With, with from my vantage point, but you're right, the, the length of the field. Speaking of length of the field, Valeria sends one for Manu. Can she fight off Wedge? No, she can't quite get to it. She's frustrated. She knows she could have made that play. It would have been a difficult play, but for Manu, the difficult plays can be easy. Not able to come up with you that. You have to give credit to the defensive play there. That was excellent defensive pressure without creating a dangerous situation, knocking the disc out of bounds, out of the hands uh, of, of Manu. And not only a dangerous situation, but a potential foul. However, that... Break chance is short-lived, but a flying block from Alyssa Mason gets the disc back for Toronto and fires up the sidelines. Who fires me up too. That was a lightning quick decision point to leave her feet there. Initiating play to Birch, gets it off the sideline. Players are hitting the turf for both teams right now. This is a physical game. I mean, there's a lot of contact between the players. However, not enough contact between the disc and the hands of Birch for a reset and a quick strike for Molly Brown. <laughs> they didn't want to set and, uh, up just like on that. offense. They just <laughs> wanted to score. I mean, why make it complicated when it can be simple? There's a, there is a, a real sense of urgency to Molly Brown right now, uh, particularly the Cardenas sisters. I mean, they, they they always play with a lot of pace, but right now you can really sense that they want it, and they know that there's not uh, an infinite amount of opportunities that they're gonna get. But that's one of the things I think you love about watching them play, is they play with that sense of urgency, that sense of valuing each chance. Never never, never a moment off for them. No, and that, that particular point I think shows uh, why uh, Cardenas sisters and revolution made such an impact they can play with such passion such focus making real differences but i think i agree with you keith that, that i'm starting to feel a little bit more of a sense of desperation uh, uh on this molly brown sideline as we get further and further into this game and i feel exactly the same ener energy that i felt at the beginning of the game from sixers which is just belief in system and trust in each other. They are emotionally the same right now as they were at the beginning of this game. You saw the graphic at the beginning. Molly Brown has fought so many times to quarters, to semis, and just been knocked out. Coach Andy Loveseth was explicit. Our goal is to win a title. Our goal is to win this game too. We're gonna do it one game at a time, but 
they, they will not be satisfied with a loss, regardless of how they arrive at it in this game. It's going to help to get turnovers like that in the red zone. Cassie Swafford getting what I believe is her first touch of the game. Also true for Liza Miner. She goes up the sideline to eat her. Lots of momentum for Molly Brown's D-line offense. So they're going towards that downwind end zone. Swing around to Miner. And into the end zone, but a, a call from Kimura is probably going to keep this one from going down as a score. Unclear if it's a, a push-off call or, or a pick call, not uh, seeing a specific hand signal. And then I back on my heels. So I, um, I think I like stepped, but um, I guess I'm gonna go to the observer. Okay, so foul called, yeah. offense foul, observer ruling, so you did push off, okay. so we're gonna give the disc back. there. Yes, Wofford, a player who's renowned for her spirit, uh, mentioned Johnson, one of the three Callahan winners on this team. It's Wofford another, standing next to Claire Chastain, who's the third. And Swafford just a little spin move, and there's no call there. We talked about desperation, but that is elation on the face of Molly Brown. They have been really working uh, on getting that, and that was their first break of this game and it was a clean hold. They got the turn and they have absolutely used that forcing Sixers into a, time, a timeout and, and just Molly Brown celebrating over there on that break. Yeah, C Coach Carla Filippo couldn't get the tee for a timeout up fast enough. She didn't want to wait and you shouldn't wait if you want to get some break mark reversibles for free. We see uh, a little a little reverse move from Cassie Swafford to get the score. And break, mark, break marked bundles are the best way to get a full affordable ultimate kit for your team. Get a dark, light, shorts, and a free reversible. And get entered to win free team prizes. Everything your team needs to play good and look great. Get your order started at breakmark.com. And speaking of breaks, I misspoke. Uh, earlier, but that was the second break for Molly Brown. They did break right out of half. Massive layouts, soaring skies, and shock upsets. See and hear about it all from every major ultimate tournament without having to sleep on a hotel room floor. An Ulti World subscription gives fans a direct line to all the biggest ultimate events. No sleeping bag required. Get connected at ultiworld.com slash subscribe. And Kristen Reed has been a valiant goal scorer for Molly Brown, just as she's been in her previous stops with Love Tractor and this past college season with Colorado Condry. And if they're gonna get back in this game, they may need some more of her high-flying antics. Yeah, Reed really making an impact on this game. I, I think she she's often moving much faster than she looks like she is, lulling her her defenders uh, into a sense. Her foot turnover rate isn't very fast, but her she's just gobbling up yards and changes direction on a dime and, and making those space plays, giving her teammates a chance to throw to her. She, she's a two-way specialist. I mean, she does a couple things extremely well, score goals and play pressure defense. I mean, it, it's not a, a complicated skill set, but it is a hard working one and an extremely valuable one. Johnston readies the pull for Molly Brown. 10-9, Toronto leads. Can they hang on? DeSantos over to Kamara. Looks off the deep ISO and goes back to Britt. Tronga to Santos work it back and forth. This Sixers are there. They'll work these short lanes, but they, they continue to make deep cuts off the back of the stack. There's no shortage of opportunities for the Sixers to take a shot. They're just waiting for the right one, and they decide this is it. Kamara takes off, jumps it into the end zone. Not quite or in just yet. outside it. High stall, but Zhang comes back from behind to get it. Oh. 
Molly Brown trying to transition into that poach set they run. Sixers settles in. And now running out of options, Hammer towards the back for Mason. Mason tracks it down. I think that that is exactly what that poach scheme is designed to do. Get a high stall count and force them into uh, a difficult option. That hammer in the wind over the top of defenders is not an easy catch, but Sixers managing to keep possession and grab there. This is the deep cut from Kimura landing directly on that line. Good field awareness from Kimura to try to jump it in and just on the doorstep. And this is another look at that hammer. Molly Brown is starting to find more, more of a defensive foot in this game. One of the things I appreciate about uh, Sixers is their upfield cutters. You know, we've said a, a lot of the same names over and over again because they're, you know, the throwers or the big receivers. But it's really the whole uh, offensive unit from Sixers continuing to churn on those deep cuts, even though they don't always get thrown to, because the space that they create and the opportunities that they create late lead to what look like really easy scores. But absolute props to the Sixers O-line for continuing to make those, those sometimes thankless cuts uh, that lead to, to smooth looking offense. I, I love that, Katie. I, I like to say that cutting is all about taking and making space. And you got to have both sides of that. You got to have players who can make it for you. Toronto's doing a great job. And another highlight for Tiffany Zhang as well. You know, Carla Filippo talking before this game highlighted Zhang and said, you know, even though she's a youngster, she's only 19, she has been in big spots. We're asking a lot of her and she's delivering. Speaking of players who've been in big spots, Lisa Vick Caitley sends one to the end zone for the Canadian on the Molly Brown roster. Rena Calabata. She'll sink that for a score. Keeps this one tight, 11 10. Yeah, flow, flowing down the field a little bit more quickly. Molly Brown finally looking like they're a little bit more comfortable against that zone, moving it more quickly, hitting the sideline. Picathley then finding that almost same third huck. Uh, Kawabata doing a pirouette in the air uh, to catch that one. Kawabata, a, a speedster throughout her career, and happy to collect a deep shot from Picathley. Her second assist of this match. And after, you know, after that last sixer score, Basically a stall eight, stall nine hammer that was contested. Uh, Claire Chastain and Hannah Leathers, who's uh, a non-playing captain, I believe is the exact title for Leathers' position this year. Uh, both immediately started waving their hands, pushing energy up into the air and saying, hey, everybody heads up, let's be excited. Claire Chastain started giving thumbs up. This team is trying to manufacture that positivity that we talked about in the first half. That joy of the game that could be so hard to grab onto. Sometimes it can be almost like sand going between your fingers as you squeeze onto it when you're under pressure. They're trying to firmly hold onto that, grip that rope and use it to pull them up. Yeah, sometimes when you need a D and you don't get one, it can feel like a loss, but really making them do that. And Kimura with a, a small mental error missing that, giving Molly Brown the opportunity that they've been seeking here. A golden chance for Denver. Justine, inside throw, contested. Mitchell brings it in and gives it back to Chastain. Uncontested on this end. A throw to Pelletier, ties it up. Denver, 11-11, with final in sight for both sides. We were just talking about how that energy, when you don't get a D and you need one, feels like a loss, but that energy pumped up into the air, celebrating, forcing Sixers into small spaces. That growing joy that we talked about Molly Brown playing with is what led to that D, right? This is the first time I've really seen Sixers look maybe like they blinked. They had a miscue on that first throw from Dos Santos to Kimura, two players who have really made an impact in this game and for this team, creating the turn opportunity and Molly Brown really valuing it. There's a shift in the body language here. You can see Sixers, they, they have water on the line. They're using a lot of the same players, but the sideline is a, a little bit more down. They, they have uh, veered maybe a little bit from that 
calm, cool, collected trust vibe we had for the first three quarters of this game, but we'll see how they respond, right? Sixers has come back from other situations. It's it's really a compelling t time, and, and the first time since maybe we were 3-3 that this game has been tied. 6-3 run in the second half for Denver to bring it back to even, and the pressure can shift quickly in this game. All of it was really on Denver coming into this half, but they have taken that, that chip stack and pushed it right back in front of Toronto and seeing if, if they can hold on. Kimura coming out after that error and taking a touch confidently. Shanna Dawson out to wedge. Santos into the backfield with the swing. High throw, but no defender in the area to do anything with it. Lauren Kishida coming back out. and She's a player who struggled with injury this year. I'm sure the Sixers are glad that she's able to contribute. Kamura unmarked against this poachy set. Ron Eater uh, pausing the game as uh, there's a call and her mouth guard pops out of her mouth trying to catch it before it gets to the ground. That was one of the more funny things I've seen happen <laughs> in this game. A little, a little silly moment maybe to cut through some of the tension here. It is. It, it certainly feels like the, the entire um, level of intensity has ratcheted up. I don't know if any of you saw. I'm just saying how it kind of felt like while I was running, she was kind of like pushing a little bit. I called it an offense and I was Watch the Do you want to? Are you going to dinner? Um. I didn't see anything using the thing. Okay. Getting another look at this up the line. Dos Santos uh, calling a foul on that uh, arm from Eater. And this has been a physical game. I mean, there's a lot of bumping, grinding down field, uh, but mostly a clean one. So I can I can appreciate that the teams are finding the right level of physicality for them. Dawson in the backfield, looking for options and finds Wedge, and that's been the approach the teams have used when they've gone up against this poachy set. Is just staying patient. And Sixers again finds a high stall option. They know that stall seven or stall eight may be when that option reveals itself. Those are doing a great job faking. And that helps generate another key hold. It's, it's great for Molly Brown to be like, hey, we're doing the right things. This is going to work eventually. You don't have a lot of time for eventually. No. Anymore. No, they do not. And we had said, you know, may, maybe Sixers looked like they blinked, but that did not look like an offensive possession where they blinked. They believed in each other. They continued to make those trust throws. They worked it sideline to sideline. Finally, you know, we said we were going to have to use the fifth and sixth option. You saw three undercuts before Molly Wedge was actually open. Molly Wedge certainly making an impact in this game with one uh, goal and, and three assists. And I remember watching the Sixers team two seasons ago when they made their run to the final. And this group, it's clear how much more seasoned this is. You know, you see a team that's gone through, uh, play, has players that have played in the World Games, has gone through World Ultimate Club Championships, has gone through Canadian Ultimate Championships. I mean, this is a much more confident, experienced group. And you see that through the players that they're turning to and relying on, uh, whether it's DeSantos, Kamura, adding Wedge to that mix, uh, Dawson, uh, Mason for the defense, Lewis, uh, this team looks a lot more prepared to play in this pressure situation. Big throw up ahead to McCaithley, gains a lot of yards for Molly Brown to start this possession. Manu, slinging it inside, forehand across the field. Now it's Molly Brown working to work in the red zone. High backhand from Pekathli to Vale. Ma 
Anu dancing in the backfield as she does just unlike any other player. And then Pickhaithley with a hard shoulder move that sends Dawson into, into another universe. Pickhaithley scores, Ooh. and the fancy footwork generates a tie. But they did have to do a lot of fancy footwork up there in that end zone line. Really great defense from Sixers. It's just that multiple changes of direction. And I think that the the chemistry that Pikaithley, Valeria, and Manu have had, that they know which direction is going to happen. And it's hard to say that quite that this has been a game of runs, but the breaks have certainly been gathered together for each side. The Sixers in the first half adding three breaks, but in a row. All, the, all of those have gone the other way this second. Yeah, Molly, Molly Brown's breaks not ha uh, coming together, not coming in a stream, but all certainly in this second half. We've seen that uh, D from Valeria that got caught. Such big momentum shifts in this game. This is exactly what I wanted from this semifinal, though. We knew that this could be a good matchup. These two teams really, uh, I think, matching up well, giving us a really exciting game. Uh, but you know how it is in Ultimate. Uh, it's not about who scores first, it's about who scores last. Especially when you got a plus one cap to worry about. And uh, these two teams are, are fighting for those final couple of goals. Who's going to be able to come up with the big plays? DeSantos takes in the pole and dutifully sends it to Kimura. And there's Strong on stage, as has been the case. I mean, this offense has not changed much over the course of this game. No, I really like that pull play from Sixers, though. I, I, it's a vertical stack in in the middle, and it, the whole front of the stack moves to the to one side of the field, leaving a player isolated. Uh, and you can see now that they're much more in a side stack. And that, that, that player who's been isolated has almost always been Cindy Truong. And even though she hasn't actually gotten the diss that many times in that ISO, it's often been just enough to get their team moving, and that's all they need. DeSanto shakes free of Chastain to get up the line, but a pick call downfield is going to stop play away. Discussing about who who was where, who was where when. As pick discussions usually go. <laughs> had, had plenty of calls in this game, but most have been resolved quickly and amicably. Santos with a nice inside backhand to Westman in the middle of the field. DeSantos can't get rid of Chastain on that series of cuts, so Kimura comes back to get it. And the battle between Britt DeSantos and Chastain taking place is a treat to watch. Now DeSantos to the end zone looking for Kimura. She gets away from Cardenas for the score. And Kimura going downfield for another big play, typically a central handler, but she's shown she can stretch the field a little bit. I like that that creativity and willing to do something different from Kimura. That uh, defense from Molly Brown really tying up a lot of the cutters, having to move positions. Kimura doing a good job to, to recognize a little bit of a handler poach and then just going deep for this space. Valeria, I think, not actually the person initially marking Kimura to pull off there to get into that space. And a great throw there from Dos Santos for the Sixers hold. And Lauren, Lauren Kimura has, has had, a, had a, a game where she's been very involved. Hasn't, hasn't, I, I'd say that a goal and assist is not reflective of her impact on this game, even though she does have Agreed. the four turnovers. And we talked about the past for this Sixers team. You're reaching that final uh, they had to play that game without Laura Kimura, who was injured during their semifinal that year. And it took a lot of the wind of the, out of the sails of that team. At that point, she was essentially the star of the team. Uh, and she had a knee injury that prevented her from playing for a long time. She's recently made her comeback. It is wonderful to see her able to take off downfield like that. She is uh, a joy to watch play. She is a, a player who can teach you a lot about the game watching her play. And she's obviously given a lot to the Sixers team in her return. I'm sure she hopes that she can push this team to the final and get to participate this time. 
They'll have to get through Molly Brown first, who's got the disc and is looking to keep this game even. Kristen Reed, far sideline, three sets. Cardenas cross field and uncovered on the backside is Megan Cousins. Gets away from Dos Santos for the score and a cool hold for Molly Brown. And I know that we talked about they have different, they have a, a set of rotations, two or three groupings or whatnot. Uh, some of that may have, may have come apart because I see a lot of Valeria Madre Cardenas right now and I don't think they're probably in each of all three groups. I agree. I think that, that sometimes you have to play, I as a coach would call it, who's hot, who's having a good game, who's mentally focused and winning their personal matchups and, and just let that where, where the team uh, energy goes. But we're, we're tied at 13s, even though we're close to that cap, it's still a point cap at, at 15. So this game, this game is gonna come down to the next two to five points two to four points. The drama building here in San Diego. And, and, and I think the drama is also aided by, by the amount of people who have come into this game. The, the sidelines are absolutely packed with supporters. Uh, other games are ending around the complex as people trickle in here. The, the energy is electrifying. Yeah, they're, they're starting to, to be a swell of players around the field. Pressure mounting for these players on the field. Kamura gets a trunk. Chastain again chasing DeSantos. Throw behind, Kamura can't catch it. Swafford does instead. Break chance for Molly Brown. Can they seize the lead late in this semifinal? Pelletier, stall count rising, finds Wilmoth. Chastain, who's got Kamura on the switch now, looking for the back shoulder huck to Eater, and it drops in. Molly Brown in front. That is a huge momentum shift and break from Molly Brown. That is the first lead they've really taken in this game since they were up three to two. It is a huge energy shift in, in this moment. Just in absolute faith in a receiver there. Eater right into the back of the end zone and elation on the face of Molly Brown, but it is not over. We're taking a timeout here. Whew, and I need a breath. We've, we've seen that type of throw from Claire Chastain so many times, but we've also seen Denver Molly Brown in the position to advance to the final so many times. Look at that resume. Semifinals, 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 semifinal. Where's the final? They're trying to put it at the top in 2022 with a win here. They don't have to go through Brute Squad anymore. They'll get to go through the fellow Northeast team, Toronto, if they can pull it off, but those years of failure, have they prepared this team to make it through? Or are, are they the ghost that haunts them now? I don't know, none of us know. We can't <laughs> know that yet, Keith. Denver looking to exercise the demons. Picking right now the personnel to send out for this D point. Yeah, six, Sixers talking to us be before the game about how this is really a hometown team is uh, how Coach Carla DeFilippo phrased it. Many of the players coming from directly the Toronto area, there aren't a lot of transplants. They don't have the same USAU college series. So all of these players have really worked in community to grow. And the fact that they're here and they're so poised in this moment and really making big, Big scores in this game really speaks to, to the strength in the community in, in Toronto, who I know, I'm sure, is watching this stream uh, and supporting them, willing them to score this hold and uh, giving them a shot at that universe point. Molly Brown, their defense has been on fire in this second half, and they're looking to do it on defense right here. See how they decide to match up with DeSantos because Chastain has taken off this point. No Cardenas 
no Chastain, no Piquetley. It'll be a different group for Molly Brown looking to get the work done. Trust in system. And also, no uh, Kimura and, and Brito Santos around the disc. Getting their first touch now is Brito Santos gets open and her forehand up the line dips towards the dirt. And an injury sub on the bid. Reeve Chan. Toronto will turn to the youngster calling on 19 year old Tiffany Zhang to sub in. And I know Molly Brown's going to want to get one of those offensive stars onto the field now that they have possession of the disc. Number 52, the number called by Walk Nagel, Andy Loveseth, and Molly Brown's coaching staff. I almost can't breathe. Imagine how the players on the field feel. Well, they have to sprint. Hopefully, they're breathing. Justine against a bidding Mason. Gets it off the end zone line up to Eater. Pelletier has win taking off. Win with separation. The disc being pushed by the win towards the back sideline. And now here's Chastain just steps away from a berth in the final. Backhand over the mark. And Molly Brown does it. The curse has lifted. Claire Chastain and Denver Molly Brown are going to the national championship game. It is elation for Molly Brown and, and just devastation for Sixers who played an absolutely incredible game. They're cheering cheering themselves, but I think that the, the outpouring of energy that I'm feeling from this, and I'm sure you at home are, and certainly Molly Brown is, is, is faith. I think that Claire Chastain especially must feel redemptive to get those two last assists in, in that particular game. The break, the double break, to score for Molly Brown to take their first semifinal win and take them to the national championship game. They have been in that other huddle so many times. So many years, Claire Chastain has had to be the team walking off of this semifinal uh, game with her head down, watching some other teams celebrate their continued season. And this year, it's, it, it's Molly Brown's turn. They took this game away. A, a, a fantastic performance from Denver, capping off a wonderful season for them. And it doesn't end here, Denver. They will march on to the final. They'll be facing the winner of Fury and Brute Squad. And what a pair of teams for them to have to contend with. The dominant title winning program of Fury and the Brute Squad team that has lived in the nightmares of Molly Brown fans for so many years, but. They're having to face off in semifinals this year. And, and Brute Squad, I think some people counted out a little bit early in the season, but they have really been rising and proving themselves in this Molly Brown beating Brute Squad in pool play, in pool play, right? And they might get another shot at them or they'll have to go through Fury, the perennial uh, favorite, I think in many ways, to, to get that national championship. Uh, birth. So long sought after this opportunity for Molly Brown, and they really earned it with this performance. The comeback down 8 5 at half, take control in the second half and win this one 15 13. I'm filled with emotion, Keith. I am filled with emotion, and that change in the stats where they had a goose egg in the first half they converted five out of seven break chances which is a really good percentage of break chances and exactly what they needed to do in this game they should have so much pride in the game that they played today both of these teams really putting on a show i i can't wait to see what comes out of toronto that pro home program that they've grown and really the uh the love fest that is molly brown loving loving themselves uh and giving us a an absolute treat uh, of a semi-final here what what a game what a game katie that we just got the privilege to witness put on by, by a group of of incredible athletes on both sides but it's going to be hard for toronto's offense in particular to look back at this game five second half breaks 
Britta Santos, who uh, was, you know, the, the star of the match in so many ways for most of the game, and then the turnover on the goal line, the forehand to the turf. I mean, that is a, a difficult memory to erase uh, and then look back at all the things you did so right. It's going to be difficult for Toronto to look back at this one. We see Molly Brown celebrating their win. Years in the making. Denver Molly Brown's birth in the finals. Able to make plays in the second half, in the first half. But trailing. Sixers in control. The block by Valeria Cardenas that was not to be. And at that point, it looked like it was all Toronto. But Molly Brown stayed with it. Ultimate World's coverage of the 2022 USA Ultimate National Championships takes a lot of work, and we had a great team here to bring it to you. They work very hard and sleep very little. I want to recognize Roland Chris, Maylian Converse, Megan Pross, Kelly Rusin, Katie Killebrew, Justin Warnicke, Ian Toner, Elizabeth Carvall, Dana Matson, Chris Mazur, Ashton Paulus, Andrea DeSabato, Teresa Diffendahl, Tanner Jurek, Shelby Sokar, Steve Sullivan, Sam Swink, Ryan McHugh, Reed Hankinson, Orion Burt, Lucia Way, Lorcan Murray, uh, Laura Osterland, Jenna Weiner, Hugo Souter, Graham Gearhart, Emily Falk, Edward Stevens, Alex Rubin, Aiden Shapiro Layton, Charlie Eisenhood. For all those five folks, I've been Keith Rayner. We appreciate you. Molly Brown, the finals. That's it for Ulti World. Thanks for all the support, and we will see you next season.